Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to talk about my Catholic books. I'm going to go through a bunch of different books that I own on religion and what I think makes them special. So to begin with, this is my Bible. It is a Douay Reims English version of the Bible. Now, contrary to what some people might believe, the Douay Reims actually preceded the more popular King James Bible. As you can see, it was finished in 1609, and it was one of the earliest English versions of the Bible. I really like this Bible because it starts with this note on indulgences by Leo XIII, and then it has this really nice letter from Pope Pius VI congratulating an archbishop for translating the Bible into Italian, which was a local language at the time, and I guess it still is. What I really like about this quote is that a lot of people out there say that the church doesn't want people reading the Bible, and that, and that it doesn't want people looking at the scripture by themselves. But in reality, here we have a note from the Pope congratulating a bishop for translating the Bible so that people could read it. Then we have this really nice prayer over here that you can say before reading scripture, which I think is a very nice addition. Now, what I like the most about this Bible is the notes. So one of my favorite examples over here is in the Gospel of Matthew in chapter 1. There's verse 25 that says, And he knew her not till she brought forth her firstborn son, and he called his name Jesus. So this is referring to St. Joseph and the Blessed Virgin Mary, and some people misinterpreted this line, as we can see in this note that references St. Jerome. So here we have the footnote that says, Till she brought forth her firstborn son. From these words, Helvidius and other heretics most impiously inferred that the Blessed Virgin Mary had other children besides Christ. But St. Jerome shews by diverse examples that this expression of the evangelist was a manner of speaking usual among the Hebrews, to denote by the word until only what is done, without any regard to the future. And then there's some examples throughout the Bible of how this expression was used to mean things that never actually happened. You have these really helpful notes that I like to call them like heretic proof notes. Like they, they stop people from reading the scripture and accidentally believing something heretical, which I think is very, very useful for a Bible like this. And it's something that a lot of Bibles I think should have. So this specific version of the Bible was made in 1914, but this copy I have is a reprint made by this really nice company called, uh, I think it's called, uh, yeah, Preserving Christian Publications, and it was remade in 2019. So this is the exact same text as that 1914 version, but it has a nice fresh coat of paint, literally, because it was reprinted. So it's nice and durable and new. So yeah, that was my Bible. Another very important book to have as a Catholic is a Missal. So uh, this Missal over here is the 1962 Angelus Press Missal. It's a daily Missal for Mass, so it tells you everything that's going to happen at Mass every single day. And I really like it because it has so much more than just the Mass. I'd also like to add that this cover over here was made by one of my dear friends. But yeah, thank you so much for making that if you're watching this video. The missile itself is really, really beautiful. So at the beginning it has, well, I added this card over here. If you're in Florida at the moment, I'd take some time to read this card because it's very important, but you can pause the video and do that. It has this really, really nice missile art all the way throughout. So you'll have this really beautiful missile line art for different liturgical seasons and stuff like that. When you actually get to the main pages, the first thing it does is it gives you an important introduction explaining the Mass and everything to do with what the Mass actually is and what it means. Then you have this really, really beautiful part at the beginning which has all of the prayers that you need to know. And this is really useful for me because when I first had to learn all the prayers in English, I, I didn't really have a resource to do that and having this book to have Latin and English side by side was extremely useful. You'll have the Latin a little bit smaller to the left and English a little bit bigger to the right. So you have that, and then if you keep going, you have, there you go, a summary of Catholic doctrine. You have like a little mini catechism about the church. Finally, you get more sections. There's a section on the Stations of the Cross, which is really, really nice. At the end of the Stations of the Cross, there's the Litany of the Most Holy Name, and then there's more things like the Prayer to St. Joseph, there's uh, the Litany to St. Joseph, there's things like Blessing Before Meals, both in Latin and English, and there's just a lot of really, really nice things. One of my favorites is the Morning Prayers over here. You also have the Evening Prayers over here. It's some very good recommendations for those. There's some really nice sections on devotion. There's devotion for confession, there's devotions before receiving the Eucharist, yeah, you got devotions for communion, and and then obviously you have the actual liturgical calendar. So if you go deep enough, you'll actually start finding the different masses for different days. Uh, it shows you everything in very, very good detail. It has all the readings and all the different things that happen. 
And then at the center, at the very center of the Missal, there is the order of the Mass, the ordinary things which are said throughout pretty much every single Mass. And it has the notes here and there explaining what each section means and its history, which I find really useful. And yeah, on the left you have Latin, and on the right you have English, which is really useful if you're trying to understand, if you don't really know all the prayers yet and you want to understand what they mean. And then at the end, there's a section after the main order of the Mass, which has the Masses for every single day. So this video is being recorded on August 6th, and today is the Transfiguration of our Lord Jesus Christ. So you can see all the different feasts and all the different Masses that will be said on that day for different saints and different things that occur. Finally, I'm going to move on to some more literature books, so things that are not necessarily liturgical or scripture, but just things that I enjoyed reading and I thought were really nice. So first we have Open Letter to Confused Catholics by Marcel Lefebvre. This is a really beautiful book. I Honestly, it was one of the most uh, hard-hitting books I've ever read. Like, you just start reading it, and all you all you can think about is like, oh, this makes so much sense. Like, why, why have I never thought about this before? He gives a lot of examples from his time period, and a lot of the stuff that he says here is applicable to the modern day also. In fact, especially so. I highly recommend this version if you can find it. I think there's, there's also a very nice audiobook. I'll have it linked in the description that you can watch for free online, and you can just listen to that and hear this book, and really it explains why the Archbishop did what he did during this period. Then another really good book, and many people say the best book by Marcel Lefebvre, this one, They Have Uncrowned Him. I've not read all of this yet, as you can tell by the bookmark, uh, but I am making my way through it. There's a very nice book study being done right now by a YouTuber named Kennedy Hall. I'll link it in the description if you guys want to check it out. And from what I've read so far, it's a very interesting read. I'm finding it extremely eye-opening, and I highly recommend it to anybody who also read the previous one. It's kind of like a, a, a more in-depth explanation of what's actually going on in the crisis in the church. This is just a little book preparation for confirmation that I got for me and my brother. And it has all the basic prayers and all the things that somebody should know before confirmation. It's like very a question and answer, like a catechism. And speaking of catechism, I also have this Baltimore catechism. Now, this is the one made by Tan Classics. It's a very nice catechism. I, I enjoyed going through it a lot, except for this one problem, which is when you get to around page 200, it just keeps going forward and forward, and then it goes back to 185 after we clearly passed... 229, 223, so there's a whole part missing. It's not like it even repeats, because then it goes from 199, and then it skips forward at like 200, and so it doesn't actually repeat or anything, it just misses a whole section. I think it's a section on marriage or something like that. So yeah, this is a very, very nice catechism, ex except for that one error. And finally, the last book I'm going to show you guys is this one. This is called My Catholic Faith. It's a very large book, physically large. Uh, it's It looks long, but that's just because it's very big. And what I love about this book is, as you can tell, it says a catechism in pictures. It has a picture on pretty much every single page. The pictures are just so beautiful, and they really help tie everything together. So while you're reading through the catechism, you can always look back at the picture at the beginning of pretty much every single page, and it offers a very quick summary of the concepts covered in the actual text. And every single concept is explained in just two pages like this. So we're at concept 129, and it's just going to be one page and two pages. Everything is explained like that which I found wonderful. If I have more time in the future, I might make a whole video dedicated on this book because it's just such a well-made book. All right, well, I hope everybody enjoyed this video. That was all of my Catholic books. If you have any recommendations for other books, please let me know in the comments. If you enjoy this video, like it or, or whatnot, you know, you know how it works on YouTube. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Goodbye.